Okay, so this is the video explaining all the little weird videos I've been putting up about, um, yeah, this is on my laundry basket, by the way, because I can't find anything to, like, hold this phone. I gotta get up. I gotta ask somebody for Christmas, like, okay, I have no family, really. Stranger on the street. Give me a little holder thing. I, fuck. All right. So, um, all the videos that I've been putting up, the past two videos, you know, with the hippie singing and all that, lead up to this explanation video. Okay, so Steve, a long time ago, goes to me, he's like, I want to see a band called Ours. And he kept saying Ours, and I'd never heard of this band named Ours in my entire life. He showed me some clip on YouTube of some guy wailing, and I was just like, it could have been like a bull getting castrated for all I knew. I barely looked at it. I have text, you know, to write, and uh, angry um, commenters to fucking deal with and, you know, yell at like a 12-year-old, because I'm a fucking grown man, and I should know better. But I don't. Um, <clears throat> so... He's like, I'm going to see this band. So first I start Googling this band, A-R-E-S. I'm like, ours? I've never heard ours. I'm not finding shit. He kept saying ours, ours. It was ours. Let's pronounce together. Ours. O-U-R-S. Don't ever fucking heard of them. Okay, fine. So I'm like, all right, fine. And um, he's like, I'm going to go box office, get some tickets. He's like, but I think the ticket's going to be a little bit more and blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, well, why don't we look on Craigslist? That's my dumb idea. That's my stupid ass. Not that this went bad from this the buyer, I mean, the seller's end, but it's a nightmare sometimes. Okay, because I've sold tickets off Craigslist before. Never had a problem. You meet somebody, you know, see an ID, something like that, swap the money, um, give them the fake tickets, and, you know, you kick them in the balls, take the money, and then just run. Run, 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 run. That's how I usually do it. You know, fuck meeting in a public place. Meet in a dark alley like you're supposed to. While I'm wearing a big brimmed hat and a raincoat looking really suspicious. Uh, <laughs> I have the tickets to Britney Spears. Come on, come on, uh, hand the money over. Hand the money over. See, you got the $40, the $50, whatever it is, the 100 now to see that fucking Xanax zombie lip sync. Come on, come on, hand it over, sucker. All right. So I'm like, hey, there's a guy selling them pretty cheap on um, on uh, Craigslist. I'm like, Let me text this guy. So I text this guy through the Craigslist relay system because I just can't call it Craigslist email. It has to be a relay because they're important. So I'm like, listen, I want these tickets. Like, how? What do we do? How do we go here? He's like, okay, well, they're at the box office. I can just switch them into your name. So I tell Steve, here's his number, here's his information. Call this man. Switch them over. Why did I not think this was going to be a problem? Why did I think Steve would be calling me up, be like, pretty birdie? What? I like, and is he supposed to? Whose name's going to be on that? Wait, what? what? Hello? Hello? The phone's upside down again. I still have a rotary. Hello? Okay, so it led to a, a headache that way. So I got involved again and I talked to this guy and he's like, okay. He's like, I said, I need proof before I send you money. Through. I said, how do you get paid? PayPal, Zelly. Listen, Steve knows nothing about it. He knows nothing about Zelly. He knows nothing about PayPal. I knew I got to do this end. I just knew it. So he's like, either one is fine with me. He's like, can you send the money today? I said, can you send me the proof today? He's like, oh yeah, sure. He sent me something that didn't quite Say, I mean, it said there were tickets for it, but it didn't kind of like have his na full name and all that. So I'm suspicious. So I told him, I said, listen, I said, I'm not sure about this. Then he sent me some other proof and a confirmation number. I'm like, okay, fine. So I wire him, the, not wire him. I fucking send him the money through PayPal. Okay, fine. That part's almost over with. Then we have to make sure that he did change the name. I didn't even think about that part. So I had to call the theater, which likes to not answer at all. Apparently, like you call up, you like for ticket information, press one for, you know, um, what the weather's out like out like outside, you know, press two what, for um, what color my panties are today. Press three for what to do about green diarrhea. Press five. I mean, they might as well just say that they might, they're not helpful at all. So I call with Steve on the phone who's starting to lose his mind because he wants to make sure they're there. He's fixated on this concert. He's going. You can't stop him. That's just the way it is. All right. So I'm like, shit. So we're calling, 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 three-way calling, three-way calling, and <laughs> it takes forever. No one will answer. There's not even any, like, background music playing. It's like, please hold, because I just kept pressing zero. Always press zero. Press operator. Operate. Don't listen to the fucking, you know, automated system that's bullshit. It's going to lead you in the wrong direction. I just press operator. Operator. If they start saying something again, the robot. Operator. Operator. Fuck you. Operator. So then we're on hold. And then Steve's like, gotta hang up and do it again. There's no music. I'm like, there's not always music when somebody's on hold. That's... There's not always there. So we're in the middle of arguing about this and somebody goes, hello, hello, Lincoln Hall Theater can help you. And I thought he was going to talk and he thought I was going to talk. So I'm giving him a moment. She had the bitch hung up on me. She hung up on me for like two minutes. I'm like, that's fucking great. So he's always like, already like losing his spot. He's like, this is bullshit. This is not working out. Oh, you should have gotten the box office. Ah, he's like pulling his hair out in his house and running around screaming. He really was. He was like freaking out. So I was like, dude, calm the fuck down. 
So we call again on hold for like 30, 40 minutes on hold, 30, 40 minutes, hang up. He's just like, I didn't know what to do at this point. I said, we just have to keep calling. We have to be patient. You're driving me crazy. Just hang up at this point. Hang up. I'll, I'll, I'll fucking handle this somehow. So I can't get confirmation because this box office won't answer whether the uh, tickets have been transferred to his name, which it was supposed to have been. So at this point, I'm just pissed. So Steve relays a message, it was like a telephone game, to this guy. I don't know if this guy was mad at me, but I think he was mad at the box office because they wouldn't answer him either so he could get what he needed. I don't fucking know. And I got, and I wake up Sunday, yesterday morning, and I have $30 refunded. It was, initially, he wanted like $20 per ticket. And I'm like, listen, nobody's ever heard of this man. Plus, I'm trying to be nice, but you're not going to get that. I was trying to get him down to 25 He says, could you at least do 30 I paid 60 for him. And he said he paid $30 per ticket. I was like, I don't think that's possible, but okay, fine. So that's all hashed out, I thought. So I get a refund in the morning. I call Steve. I'm like, what the fuck? Is everything con uh, canceled? He's like, the guy's really mad. I just don't think this is going to work out. Ah, forget about everything. I have to go to work. I'm thinking everything's canceled. I'm thinking this guy, give me my money back. I don't know what the fuck's going on at this point. Fine. I get a frantic call from Steve at 6 o'clock p.m. saying, okay, it's on. The guy has changed the name. We got to go. Uh, give him the money later. That's what he said. I'll be there in like 20 minutes. Bye. I'm like, what? Hold on. What the fuck? I'm fucking like barely out of the shower at this point. I have to get my days and nights switched back around. It's been fucking terrible. I'm living like I'm 17. So, um... I was like, oh, what, what? And he's like, yeah, no, no, it's good. I'm like, what's good? He's like, the guy said pay him later. So he's already made a deal on my end to pay this guy again or send him back the $30. I don't know what the fuck's going on at this point. I said, listen, I said, okay, whatever. I'll send him the money, fine. But how do we know? He goes, well, he sent me a confirmation number. He said, sent Steve a confirmation number. Okay, fine. He sent Steve a confirmation number. But it was a kind of like, again, it was really weird. And I blame the theater for it more. It was very weirdly worded. It was just a confirmation number, but it didn't have the name. It didn't say it was transferred over. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I don't know if we're getting tickets at this point. I don't know what we're doing. Steve picks me up like a maniac. He has crackers because he doesn't want to pay for anything at the theater. He's like, we need to eat. He's like, here's Ritz. He's like throwing Ritz crackers at me. What the fuck are you throwing? I just ate. I'm fine. He's like, let's go to 7-Eleven real fast. We have cheap stuff. <laughs> We had him at a 7-Eleven where there's a black guy going crazy outside. Like, he was cool. He was asking for money and everything. The funniest thing he said, though, and I, I can't, people be mad at this if I say it. So, I'll, it's, he said it, though, was um, all these nice white people are going. It was a kind of a rich area. And they're all like, um, hi, hi, black guy. How are you doing? Yeah, we can't afford anything. Bye, bye. We're going to go buy nonsense shit at 7-Eleven. We can't afford anything. He's like, God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Oh, yeah, you two little white kids with those nice North Face jackets, which are $100 or more each. Yeah, can you give me like, I don't know, a dollar and two? No? Okay. Okay. God bless you, right? And I'm sitting in the car and I'm looking at my phone and I heard him go, that's right. That's right, everybody. Don't give the, I'll say, don't give the Negro money, but that's not the word he used. <laughs> don't give the money. And I cracked up. That was the funniest thing ever. And he cracked up because I cracked up. I was just like, that was, it was funny. I don't know why I'm sharing it, but it was funny. So Steve runs and gets some, he's got like, he gets a little cheap, I don't know if they're churros. I don't know what they call them. They're like burrito. They're like faux burritos. I don't know what that, I think they're made out of like Rottweilers or something. I have no idea. And two big slushies and he's running out trying to hold everything. What the fuck is it? He's like, I got free slushy for you on my points. Here, let's go. How do we get to the theater? And I'm like trying to Google everything. And he keeps saying, so he's driving with slushy and rich crackers are everywhere. And he's sitting there, like, okay, we gotta eat. We gotta eat. I'm like, I fucking, what the fuck is wrong with you? He's getting honked at by like everybody because sometimes his driving is, you know, it's okay, but you, you've seen him on a video before. And uh, so we're driving, we're driving. And finally we arrive there and he's just like, you know, scarfing down food. Then comes the parking situation. <laughs> he can't parallel park. I can barely parallel park, but I look for, I mean, I have a smaller car now, so I don't have to worry about that beast that he's driving anymore. So he's starting to parallel park. He's like, can you do it? I don't think I'm going to do it right. And then there's somebody waiting to just, I don't know what they were doing, but they were waiting behind him. And he's like, go, go so I can parallel park. Go so I can focus on parallel parking. And they wouldn't go for some reason. I don't know if they thought he was leading the space or whatever. So he kind of peeled it back. He hits the car behind him. <laughs> he hits the car behind him. I'm like, oh, fuck. And you know, it's one of those things. It sounds bad. I'm like, oh my God, you fucked up their fender or their bumper. If you fucked up their, their, their headlights, some shit is going to be hanging off there. I'm, Steve's freaking out. The car's lopsided. He goes out. Turns out there's like not a scratch. So literally just hit the bumper. I even looked at the bumper at the license plate. Everything looked pristine, this car. Okay, better than my car. My car's semi kind of new. Okay. So then the car is still like kind of just a little bit away from the curb. He's obsessed with this. He has issues about this. I don't know what it is. I'm not saying he's parked all the way out in the street or whatever, but it's a little like, it's out a little bit. 
He loses his mind and says he can't leave the car that way. I said, dude, it's snowing, it's cold. Let's get the fuck in the theater. He's like, I just can't leave my car this way. I have to try to get to something that I have to do. It's not all the way out in the street. It's like this much away from the curb. It's, you know, like a little bit. So a guy walking a dog, Steve goes, sir, sir. And I'm just like, what the fuck is he doing? I'm freezing, by the way, at this point. He's like, sir, uh, can you park my car? The guy's like, what? He's like, can you park my car? And he's like, ah. And so the guy's like, I guess I could. And the guy, first thing the guy says, and I rubbed this in his face all night. First thing the dude says, he goes, you look fine to me. I, mean, I just can't have it this way. I'm like, holy shit. So I'm pissed. I'm out there. And Steve's pissed. And he's out there. And this guy gets in the car. Could have stole it. Could have just driven away. I'm like, that would have been the funniest thing if he just drove away. and said, fucking okay. It's mine now. Bye. Parked it to his, you know, satisfaction. We go in the theater. And uh, the concert begins. Nice theater. Loved it. Uh, I put up some of the acts and all that. This is my brief overall review of the theater. And... Just the experience itself, because I know I'm already like doing too much talking. First thing we run into, we go up to the bar. I don't drink, so Steve's like, let's get something. And I'm like, all right. And he got, he wanted a coffee. And they did have coffee in this little fancy glass cup. Of course, like six, seven, eight dollars. I'm like, I don't know, whatever. Fuck. And I said, get me, I said, they didn't really have any like, soda type thing. They didn't, have, I didn't see ginger ale or anything. So I'm like, can I have like a, a non alcoholic beer? She's like, sure. She's like, do you want it? A wheat alcoholic beer? Do you want a Heineken? I'm like, honey, it's a non-alcoholic beer at this point. Who cares? You could be serving me horse piss. I mean, it's 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 something cold to drink that reminds me of my past a little bit, but doesn't give me the urge to go to jail and start punching people. So let's just work together here. So she gives it and she says to us, because Steve's like, you know, oh, can we get refri refills? And I didn't think we could. She goes, Oh yeah, I'll totally take care of you. I'm like, oh wow, this chick's pretty cool. Wow, all right. We go in, there's like 45 people there. And I'm like, Okay. Steve's like, it's going to get packed the way it came in. It got packed to about maybe like 90, 100 people. It's a small venue anyway. So the first act, like you see, is a hippie singing on a guitar. I thought he had a really great voice. I just wanted to slip my wrist every time he sang. He's like, so the world's troubles. Yeah, yeah. What are we going to do? Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm like, okay. Okay. You're excellent voice. Please go work for the Suicide Hotline. Sing those songs. Watch them off themselves one by one. So that goes on. Then the next band comes on. A little more chic, a little more rock. Um, I don't even know the names of these people. I'm so sorry. He had like a light ball, a light bulb or a light ball that he was holding. He's like, like dude, he's got his little, you know, tight jeans on. He's like shimming all over stage. And they were really like rock and roll, like hardcore. Like it was loud as fuck. I'm like, okay, I, I see where you're going with this. It was okay. Somebody said that he played with Blind Melon at some point. I don't know. It was a drunk girl. That, another fun girl we met. I love this concert so much. And Steve will talk to anybody. So, of course, a drunk girl comes over. And she's like, this is going to be an awesome concert. I'm going to go get a picture with a guy. He's in the second opening act. I'm going to go. He's, he's talking at a table with a girlfriend right now. Buy me a picture. You want to see me get a picture? I'm like, I want to see you just do gymnastics at this point, lady. I mean, you're so fucked up. But, okay. And then Steve's like, tell him. Tell him it's fun. And I'm, I'm like, the hours, the band or whatever. And she's like, oh, it's fine. I've been following him for like a year. I'm like, needs a life. So... <laughs> I make my way out. We go in the concert. Then the main attraction comes on. Here's what I thought of him. Then I find out, I didn't mention this part. He was some kind of Christian singer, I think. And I was ready to kill Steve. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this a Jesus concert? Have I been dragged to a fucking Jesus concert? I will kill you. Because the first two didn't seem Jesus C to me. I'm like, he's like, only two songs are really are dedicated to Christ. Praise him. And I'm like, what the fuck? I don't want to be here. I'm like, okay, whatever, whatever it is. And he came out, he swore a little bit. So I was like, is he really for Jesus? I'm just confused. He, he looked like, well, he described himself as like a goth bird, like kind of, and he did look like a goth bird. If he had a lot of cocaine. I don't know. I don't think he's doing anything anymore, but whatever. He was dressed in like stuff from like the crow. He looked like a character and he comes out and then I noticed behind him, there's three, he's got a bass player, a guitar player, a drummer. They're all about like 20 or 21. And this guy's about, 46, 44. And I'm like, how did... And Steven said these band had been disbanded for 10 years and then they're together now. And I'm like, when when the rest of these people were five? What the fuck? What, what, nothing is making sense to me at this point. He can wail, like as far as like an Axl Rose type wail, sing really, really high. I just wasn't really into any of the shit. It was hardcore. It was good. I mean, the drummer was awesome. The bassist was awesome. They were all awesome instrumentalists. I mean, the guy himself, the hours or whatever his name is, was awesome. Uh, he twitched around a little bit. But he kept doing this thing that annoyed me where he'd stop it. So, you know, I felt we were going in a wrong direction at a certain point. And you know what? Hours is not just 
a band about hours. It's hours as a collective. I'm like, that's it. This is Jesus shit. I know it is. And Steve's like, shut the fuck up. So I'm sitting there. And he kept, but he would go, you know, bands talk to the audience, but not forever. And at this point, I'm like, I want to go. Sing the next fucking crappy song. Let's go. And, you know, but then again, he was telling stories. It's like, I was really tripping balls one time. I took a lot of ecstasy. Yeah, it was crazy because I was having a rough night. And, you know, I'm like, is this AA? What are we in? What is this now? What is happening? Overall, the concert was good. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and lie and say it wasn't, but I kept seeing this shit. There were certain songs that they guess were Jesus-y or something, and the audience scared the shit out of me. They were doing this shit. I'm like, oh, fuck, here it comes. Oh, here it comes. I'm like, oh, shit, where's the rattlesnakes? When are they just going to start, like, you know, healing us and shit? Like, I'm, I'm frightened at this point. What the fuck is going on? I'm just... But, you know, then Steve's like, did you have a good time? I'm like, yeah, actually, it was a good time. Uh, the audience was worth watching alone. They were bizarre. They were good. They were entertaining. They were foaming at the mouth at points. But, yeah, and they, they were, like, have some cult following because they knew every word of every song. You could see them out like, and I'm like, oh, fuck. That. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, so, yeah, that's exactly what I took the videos of was like i think the first opening app and then i tried to stream the concert it worked but the sound quality is bad i don't know if i left it up or not or i deleted it it was a long night so yeah we went to a concert and it was an ordeal but anything for that guy right no more next time a concert where it's one person uh doing a venue where nice couches and more we had to stand the whole time too and i'm over that shit too i don't want to stand anymore in a concert for fucking five hours i'm sorry i don't want to do it i don't want to okay no i'm 43 years old i don't want to fucking do it anymore <laughs> i want to sit down and there's a couple of seats and bastards putting their beers and shit on i was ready to knock them over <sighs> merry christmas almost everyone